The Fantasy Ed with Jonathan Chan, Kevin Quo, Richard Seville. Hello and welcome to the Fantasy Edge. I am Richard Seville of FantasySixPack.net and joining me shortly, also from FantasySixPack.net, Jonathan Chan and Kevin Ho. And uh, this week, uh, not so many people got injured, but we had some uh, pretty exciting football. Um, a few, a few less injuries and uh, and a good game coming up. So we're doing our podcast a little bit earlier so that we can catch the. Uh, Baltimore Ravens and Kansas City Chiefs game should be a good one. I hope so. Kevin, you looking forward to it? Yeah, I mean, besides being a Ravens fan and and uh, having a lot invested in this game, I've got a couple fantasy players that I really need to go off. So, um, glad we can record this podcast before I lose my mind tonight. <laughs> yeah, I think we all have. Uh, 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 John, o, you and I were talking before the podcast that we have uh, some scenarios that need. Correction. Yeah, preferably. Uh, uh, Lamar scores a lot, throwing it to Hollywood and Mark Andrews, but still doesn't outscore Mahomes by thirty, which yeah. I think is pretty doable. You know, I need uh, Lamar to outscore Mahomes by ten, so we both can we both can uh, uh, have cake and and not uh, trample on any on on either. But I don't know, Kev. I, do you think Lamar can score more than ten fantasy points than uh, Mahomes? possible yeah uh i mean of course it's possible i mean lamar is if he gets a rushing touchdown or i mean or even two then you're probably in a good spot i mean it's always possible with lamar and uh i don't know mahomes is is good but um you know if a couple of those passing touchdowns he throws go to ch ceh on the ground then you know maybe he won't have a great fantasy day so i think you'll be all right um also we are i guess we're gonna i guess we can do a little bit of a game preview since uh but even though this game will be after, we can kind of check the notes afterwards to see how our things pan out. But I, I'm looking for Baltimore to try and keep the uh, ball on the ground and, and give Mahomes as, as little time on the field as possible. Do you think that's a sound strategy, Kev? Yeah, um, the Chiefs have really struggled to defend the run this year. Uh, the Chargers gashed them last week, and David Johnson was looked good enough to, you know, for people to call him rejuvenated in Week One. So um, Baltimore, with their kind of multifaceted running attack, probably should go in there and just wreak havoc. Okay. All right. Let's get on with uh, Sunday and uh, recap a little bit of the injuries and the news that came in on Monday. Um, Michael Pittman of the Indianapolis Colts. Um, he's now in the uh, IR with uh, uh, Paris Campbell, and that basically leaves Zach Pascal. Uh, Jono uh, didn't really have a good game yesterday, but uh, are we still high on Pascal? Is he? Can we flex him? Uh, I wouldn't flex him just yet unless you're in a deeper league, but I don't think you can really blame uh, Zach Pascal for having a bad game. Uh, it was the Jets, and the game was out of hand far earlier than it, like, you know, than would have given Pascal any opportunity. It ended 36 to 7, and he still got four targets uh, in what should have been a super run heavy script. So I'm not going to make any assumptions off of that, uh, as now the de facto, you know, wide receiver two in that offense. Uh, Pascal is well worth uh, at least a bench dash. Right, and uh, Kevin, are you? Do you have any shares in Pittman or Paris Campbell? And what do you think of the uh, Colts' offense to to this point? Yeah, I had Campbell um, in a few places. I didn't have any of Pittman. Campbell, I think, is going to return before Pittman. So, um, you know, if he's still out there and you have a spot, maybe go grab him. The Colts offense, I, I don't know. It's kind of underwhelming. You know, Jonathan Taylor is in a prime blow-up spot against the, the Jets who can't do anything, and he didn't really impress. Uh, it was more of a defensive show. I, I don't think they're going to be a, a high-volume, high-octane offense going forward, kind of just middle of the pack. Yeah, because I didn't, I didn't see T. Y. Hilton get much of a good game, Jono. Yeah, I mean, I wasn't gonna say there were a ton of opportunities, anyways, but it's uh, especially in a game script like that. But Hilton's kind of struggled uh, throughout the year, anyways. I think he's still feeling the effects of maybe his injuries, or still hasn't, you know, gotten that that chemistry with Philip Rivers yet. But uh, whatever the case, uh, Hilton can't really be trusted as more than like a flex wide receiver three ish right now. Uh, yeah, that Colts offense is working through, and they're, I guess, they're working through some things, and they're being helped a lot by their 
by their defense at the moment. So let's we'll see what happens. Yeah, Kev, just three catches on three targets for 52 yards for Hilton. Um, do we, uh, is, is he a buy low? No, I think he kind of just is what he is at this point. Just kind of like a dependable option for Rivers. I don't really see much higher upside than this. All right. So if anybody wants to move on from him, you're not, you're not, uh, you're not interested. I mean, if, if, if you want to move on from him, you're not going to get much for him. And if you want to buy him, I, that's, that's fine too. I wouldn't disagree with it. It's just, I mean, what are you really getting? It's eight points a game. It's right. cool, but you know. All right, moving on to uh, Terry Cohen. Uh, I'll stick with you, Kev. Uh, he's out for the season. What does this mean for uh, David Montgomery? And what's this timeshare with David Montgomery and Ryan Nall going to look like? Yeah, I don't, I don't think it's going to be much of a timeshare. I think it's going to be David Montgomery's backfield. Um, I think he's good enough in the passing game where he's going to be used there. Ryan Nall is by no means a talented back, and, and he'll come in and spell David Montgomery every once in a while. Cordell Patterson will be used on third downs every once in a while. But I would say you know, 70 80% of the touches are going to be Montgomery's. Oh, yeah, I, I guess I meant Cordell Patterson, not Ty Montgomery. Uh, got, got Montgomery on the brain. Uh, but... Uh, Let's move on to uh, Nick Foles, uh, Jono. Uh, we'll start in week four. Now, this is, to me, this is kind of good news. And uh, I don't even need to ask you, but I'm going to ask it anyway because it's kind of an obvious question. Uh, how major a boost does that give the Bears pass catchers? Uh, at the very least, Allen Robinson owners can have a, take a big sigh of relief. Um, yeah, Foles looked much, much better uh, than Trubisky did. Although he was 2-0, and Kevin, I apologize. I have to mention that. <laughs> Trubisky was 2-0. and He's still 2-0. and uh, But, yeah, Foles just looked much better, uh, ran the offense a lot smoother, and got Anthony Miller involved, uh, which the Bears are just shockingly not doing. So, uh, arrows up for, you know, Anthony Miller, Allen Robinson, and Jimmy Graham, oh, especially God. with uh, especially with Cohen out, whose main job was receiving anyways. So... All right, and Kev, uh, is uh, Foles streamable somewhere down the road? Foles, yeah, I think so in good matchups. I mean, Foles is just going to come in and sling it, so if you can put up with those weeks where he's going to probably throw a ton of picks, then he's going to have good weeks and good matchups. Yeah. And sticking with you, uh, uh, well, yeah, I'll stick with you, Kev. Um, Chris Carson, minor knee sprain. Um, what's the outlook for Carlos Hyde and Travis Homer in the, if he misses time? Yeah, I mean, I think Hyde is an easy pickup if if Carson's going to miss time. I think he'll he'll step right in and kind of give you seventy percent of what Carson did. Um, it's kind of unfortunate. Uh, Chris Carson always seems to get hurt, but um, we kind of predicted this, right? So uh, if if Hyde's available, you know, go out and grab him. Even then, you know, like a knee sprain, there's not too many details about it. It might be a tricky injury where he misses extended time, or when he comes back, he's not the same. So Hyde is interesting. Homer is interesting, but I, I think with Hyde there. I think they would rather go with the uh, the veteran running back. All right, and uh, uh, Jono, uh, I don't know if uh, if you have any shares in Chris Carson, but do we are we like with the the offense as it is because um, this this meme of let Russ cook does it does it does it kind of mean that uh, when Carson's out, um, do you think it could mean that Carlos Hyde doesn't get uh, as much? Because of the let Russ cook meme at the moment? Uh, I mean, it's a possibility, but this week's game is against the Dolphins. So Russ can, they can let him cook or not. The Seahawks are going to go up very early in this game. And then you're going to be in Carlos Hyde clock clock bleeding mode. So regardless of how this ends up, especially against the Dolphins, he's going to get, you know, 15 carries, even if it's just to bleed the clock at the end of the game. And he can rack up, you know, a cheap goal line score or just uh, some some useful yards at the end of the game. And it it pays off to pick him up regardless. Mm. And uh, sticking with you, John, a guy who isn't cooking at the moment is Carson Wentz. Uh, Doug Peterson uh, dismissed any notions of benching Wentz. Uh, Would you like to see uh, Wentz benched? Nah, you can't really blame Wentz for all of the Eagle struggles right now. I mean, the, the line doesn't look good. Um, the, the whole offense is just, it just looks, you know, out of sync, but yeah, Wentz hasn't been good. No, two interceptions each game. He's tied with Kirk Cousins for the league lead, uh, with six, but he's shown before that he can play well. Um, and I guess once the offensive line, you know, gets back in sync, once they're all healthy again, hopefully, uh, he can pick it up, but I don't think that Hurts would be any better. Uh, rookie coming in on, you know, a short camp, uh, behind a struggling line. I don't think he'd be any better, and that wouldn't be the solution uh, to bench Carson Wentz. Yeah, Kev, he still ended up as uh, as QB10 this week, but um, it's still the 
Um, are, are we kind of a little bit worried about Wentz, though, uh, as if you're if you're an owner? Yeah, you're worried because he just looks like he's uncomfortable making a ton of mistakes out there. A QB 10 against the Bengals is not ultra impressive to me. Um, it's just going forward, it just doesn't seem like uh, he has the same ceiling that he has. And on top of that, now we kind of have to worry about I guess the possibility of him being benched, like you mentioned, but I don't think they'll bench him. Well, they've got San Francisco, Pittsburgh, and Baltimore coming up. Now, that is the bigger problem that I was going to bring up. He's not going to look any better anytime soon. Yeah, because uh, he has to wait until week seven for the Giants. So that's uh, that's not looking good. Uh, what's next on our list? We got, uh, oh, Dallas Goddard, uh, speaking of the Eagles, is uh, expected to miss some time, Kev. Um, I guess we're all in on Wentz now. Or, uh, Wentz. Ertz, what are these Z names, huh? Uh, yeah, I mean we've we've got to be, but I, I think I touched on it last week. It's uh, Zertz, Ertz was kind of on my panic column. It's just if this offense isn't going to score touchdowns, um, and we still think Miles Sanders is going to be a top ten RB, then Ertz is just kind of like a middling tight end. He's like essentially like what Greg Olson was like three years ago, where he'll just catch six balls and sixty yards every game, and and one in every four games they'll have a touchdown like that's not great okay and uh just to wrap up the a few of the, the other injuries uh if any of you guys want to jump in and talk about anything uh, deontay johnson concussion chris godwin hamstring uh russell gage uh concussion mike williams hamstring john brown uh calf um it was a, a bit of an unknown john brown he just left the game and he didn't come back and you just didn't see him anywhere he wasn't talked about or anything but uh um uh, you guys want to, Johnny? You want to comment on any of these? Uh, yeah, I guess I'll <coughs> talk about the the Excuse Chris me. Godwin one. Uh, just because he this is not the first game that he could possibly miss uh, this season. I know we may we 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 brought up Scotty Miller a little bit after uh, in the first podcast after the injury, but I will say, uh, Scotty Miller had the highest average average targeted air yards this week. Uh, which I thought was super funny in the uh. And if it continues, then and Godwin misses a game, then Miller is not a bad dart throw uh, with all the air yards he's getting. Apparently, thirty-seven uh, percent of the Bucks' air yards. So I'd say that Scotty Miller is a decent dart throw if Chris Godwin does miss the game. Yeah, Scotty Miller. He's the he's kind of like the 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 kind of guy that Brady wants. Brady wants an Edelman, and he's going to make Miller and Edelman come hell or high water. It seems like Kev. I don't I, like while I get it. Um, Scotty Miller is more of a downfield receiver, um, not necessarily like a slot guy, which is why it is interesting that you know people kind of have him pegged as a direct Godwin replacement because God- Godwin kind of works in the slot and downfield. So uh, it could work. It could not. Like Jonathan said, it is worth a dart throw. But I don't know. This Tampa Bay offense is not impressive to me, so I wouldn't put too much into it. Right. Any other of these uh, injuries that I mentioned that uh, you want to talk about or, or have I missed one? That's a um, I, don't, I don't think you've missed any. I think Deontay Johnson is the one who's who's uh, concerning just because concussion. You never know. He said he's fine, but uh, he was having a, he was on the way to having a blow up year. So that's the only reason when I'd be concerned. Yeah. Uh, okay, let's move on to our next segment. Um, we've got the list of bad uh, RBs and bad wide receivers here and bad tight ends. Hey, you guys can hey, look Richard, at your notes. Richard, can you give me a second? I got to take this call. Sure. I'll pause it here. Okay, so it's time for our uh, observations and uh, of of the weekend and uh, what we learned. Kev, what did you learn or what did you observe this weekend? Um, let's go with observe because I knew this was true already. Justin Jefferson is sick uh, in a good way. Obviously, that dude is a baller. Um, Minnesota stinks. They will their defense will continue to stink. And I'm pretty sure Justin. I'm pretty confident Justin Jefferson is going to end the season as like a wide receiver three. Uh, the dude is good. The volume is good. Cousins is just good enough to get him the ball. Yeah, it's um, it's all good. The only thing concerning me is that uh, Mike Zimmer is n- not the kind of guy who's. I don't know. He's kind of stuck in his ways. With um, he's kind of a ground first kind of guy. Traditional. Yeah, but they suck. That's where them sucking comes in. Their defense is horrible. And yeah. they are going to get blown out a ton and have to throw a ton. Yeah. I, we can only hope. Uh, Jono, uh, have you got any observations or I what did you want to add on to, add on to that. Uh, in terms of a waiver, because Jefferson was kind of met the first two weeks, how much are you putting into budget wise into into a Justin Jefferson for this week after the blow up, Kevin? 
Uh, how much of my waiver? If I'm if I'm desperate for a wide receiver, I'd probably go uh, something like fifty five percent. If I don't yeah. need a wide receiver, then it's just you know thirty percent, twenty percent, something like that. I mean, he is at the end of the day, like while he's nice, he's he is just a wide receiver three who's going to have like while I think he's going to be good at the rest of the season, he's definitely going to have bad weeks because he's not the one, number one wide receiver there, and he's probably at best the third best option on that offense. So if I don't need him, then I'm probably not going to invest too much into him. Now, say your co-host is in a keeper league where he was dropped prior to the blow. Am I dro- am I spending ninety five percent of my budget on him? <laughs> Ooh, I don't know about that because you might want to. Say, we're in week three year. here. <laughs> yeah, I, see, next year I don't think he's gonna be. I wouldn't say he's gonna be anything better than wide receiver two, but then you do get to f- keep him for free. So that's okay. interesting. That's interesting. My first, yeah. my first, my first recommendation is to not do it just because he's a wide receiver. Yeah, I was going to ask you can't, that. Yeah, you but. just can't do that much for a wide receiver. No, I wasn't going to spend ninety five, but I'm going to drop some serious money on this. So. That, yeah, that's fine. But yeah, I don't know if you can do it for yeah. I mean, he, I don't shoot. He might be this year's DJ D, DK Metcalf or AJ Brown. Yeah, never know. No. but yeah, it's something I got to think about. But anyways, uh, observation. Um, since you brought it, we, we we were talking about the Jets a little bit before. Uh, I'm just going to observe that Sam Darnold deserves a lot better, and Adam Gase, regardless of what happens on Thursday, should have been fired months ago. Um, the six and two run at the end of last season bought him an extra three, four games, uh, but it was it's it shouldn't have. Uh, he's bad coach. He's just no like just incompetence all over the field. Uh, can't bring up a strategy. Uh, throwing his players under the bus, uh, wasting a talent like Le'Veon Bell, uh, and just... I know Sam Darnold's not the greatest quarterback, but he's better than what he's showing. And there's no reason Adam Gase should still have a job. No. Uh, and it's baffling that, that, you know, this game against the Broncos, that they might win. You Like, they're both bad teams. Like, the Jets might pull something and win this game, and then Gase gets to keep his job? Come on. He deserved to get fired a long time before this, and... Boy, it's uh, it's bad in New York. It's really, really bad. Yeah, um, it is bad uh, in New York. There's, there's really no. Although I do have a spec ad from, uh, from uh, the Jets, just in case things do change. But uh, he's, he's about the only guy who's. Uh, so I thought from the poor old Jets, I give, uh, I'll give a spec ad. We'll talk about him later. But my observation this week is, is the strange fortunes. Of the Bears and the Falcons, like the the Falcons have been have had comebacks against them twice, and the Bears have come back against teams twice. And I don't know between Nagy and Quinn, and Quinn is actually a I think he's a better coach, but he's closer to being on the bubble than Nagy is. And I just I just blows my mind is how how uh, the Falcons are blowing games, and it's blowing my mind about how the Bears are coming back. I mean, Mitch Trubisky's comeback was amazing in itself, and Foles coming back, yeah, Foles can come back, uh, but to come back against the Falcons, this Falcons defense just, I mean, they can't lose games like this. I mean, you can, you can say that Julio was out and, you know, but, but the, the Falcons are not controlling any games. They're not doing anything uh, special. I'm kind of worried about Quinn, like, he was already on the bubble, like, in midseason last year. I think we could lose Dan Quinn um, midseason this year if it doesn't turn around. Kev? Yeah, I mean, that's pretty reasonable. The Falcons, ever since the Super Bowl, I mean, it's it's become a running joke, but uh, all jokes have, like, a kernel of truth to them. They just cannot hold on to these leads, and it makes no sense. I mean, Dan Quinn's supposed to be a defensive coach, so uh, for this to keep happening to his team is pretty ridiculous. It really doesn't make sense, does it, Toronto? No, and a lot of that comes down to offensive strategy too. Uh, with four up, you know they're up with four minutes left, and they threw three consecutive incomplete passes and took eleven seconds off the clock. And it's exactly what happened in the Super Bowl when the Pats came back on them. So it's bad coaching, and then just not learning your lesson from before, and just not you know not improving. And it, yeah, Dan Quinn, he needs to be fired too. Right. Um, Jono, uh, it's time for. Moving on up. I should play the song, you know, like, we're not moving on up. But who is moving on up for you, Jono, this week? Uh, I'm going to go with Andy Isabella. Uh, without Christian Kirk in the lineup, uh, he's had a, you know, he had a good game, a really good game. Uh, caught all four of his targets, 47 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, he has 114 yards over his last two games. And Cliff Kingsbury came out and said that he wants uh, to increase uh, Isabella's role in the offense. Um, 
Kirk has not been the model of health uh, while in the NFL, and now Isabella's been there. He's shown he can. Last year, he had a few, a lot of plays, uh, big plays that uh, you know he has that breakout ability. And if he gets more involved in more consistent targets and a more consistent workload, I think he can overtake Kirk to be that that wide receiver too um, in in Arizona in, in a you know a high octane offense. Yeah, I, I, it surprised me that uh, like Kirk is. Kirk is right, falling right off the radar, isn't he, Kev? Yeah, I mean, it's it's not too much of his fault since he's he's just not healthy, but he's just not that dynamic of a player. I mean, Isabella is a guy who, I mean, look at his career stats. He has 15 receptions on 20 targets for 300 yards and three touchdowns. Like, that is just insane efficiency. Um, he's, he's kind of an athlete. He brings, like, a downfield threat to this offense. Like, Kirk is, I mean, DeAndre Hopkins is basically, like, a 500 times better version of Christian Kirk. So, yeah have Isabella in the offense kind of brings them something different so I wouldn't be too shocked to see him more involved going forward yeah I think that's where uh I think that's where you're right is that is that Kirk um is actually the second is is just far too much of a second fiddle to Hopkins I mean Hopkins just fits right in Hopkins you can tell Hopkins is having fun with the Cardinals isn't he He's just enjoying. He's enjoying life in the Cardinals. So yeah, I mean, I think it's it's pretty fair to call it like an Adam Gay situation where you get away from Bill O'Brien, you're probably happy. Yeah, it's probably right. Uh, Kev, who have you got? Uh, my moving on up is actually Joe Burrow. Um, I mean, he's good at football. I I, I don't. I know this comes as a shock to some people, but uh, yeah, he's he's good at football. The team defense. I mean, it's basically the blueprint that we laid out. The team sucks. He's good at football. He has good offensive weapons, and therefore he's going to be a good fantasy quarterback. He's the quarterback nine right now, and I think he has to be discussed as more than just a streamer. Um, granted, they are going to. He's going to. He's probably going to have his struggles as a rookie, but to me, he looks like the most poised rookie I've seen in years. I mean, if we're talking about who who's been the last one, like Kyler Baker, whatever, like Burrow looks as well, good, if not better, than all those dudes. And uh, except Mahomes, yeah. I, I well, mean, yeah, I, Mahomes had a year under Andy and Andy Reid and Alex Smith. I I really don't consider that his rookie season. Yeah, I don't consider that his rookie seasons either, because because he just he was just held out for most of the year. But they're they've got Burrow, in. yeah. Uh, in and win, he's 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 right there. Uh, Burrow, yeah, you're right about Baker Mayfield. That's a, that's a, that's another story too. Uh, my moving on up is uh, something pretty. People are got to be happy about picking up Mike Davis. Um, not filling in the shoes of uh, Christian McCaffrey, but people have got to be satisfied with uh, Mike Davis uh, at least putting in decent fantasy numbers that you picked him up off the waiver wire. Unlike uh, another team that lost <laughs> lost a major running back, um, Mike Davis is filling in properly. I, th- I think it has to do with that. We were kind of worried about that uh, offensive line of the Giants, but really the Panthers, uh, Mike Davis can flourish. Uh, and if you did pick him up off the waivers, um, you're doing all right, and he's moving on up. The only problem here, and I'm seeing this, I'm looking ahead here, is that you don't want Mike Davis to do too good when Christian McCaffrey comes back because they might get it in their mind that, well, we've got Mike Davis here. We don't have to work Mark Christian McCaffrey on so many downs now. You know what I mean, Jono? Yeah, I mean, Davis, he's not going to be able to fill in McCaffrey's shoes, but he played well enough that you're comfortable putting him in your lineup because he does have that passing floor as well, like McCaffrey does. Um, the game plan didn't change all that much, but you're not going to get the crazy efficiency. But yeah, you're more than comfortable using Mike Davis as a pure replacement uh, in, your, in your lineup if you did suffer that the the, uh, the CMC injury there. Yeah, and, and also what I'm saying too is that if you do have him and when Christian McCaffrey comes back, you're not dropping him. Yeah, if you have the bench space, yes, but um, he's not. When McCaffrey comes back, Mike Davis isn't going to have a role. It's going to go back to what it was. It's if you have the bench space, sure, in case of another McCaffrey injury, but he's not going to have you know a, a timeshare there. That's that's Chris McCaffrey's backfield, and Mike Davis didn't go back to whatever. But I'm, what I'm three, saying is, is, three, is that I think the if if Mike Davis does too well, that percentage might sh- might push a little bit. No. Christian, he, he there's unless Mike Davis starts pulling out McCaffrey numbers, McCaffrey's not giving up any of that backfield when he comes back. Huh. We can, uh, we'll, we'll, we're eager to see how that works out. Uh, I guess uh, I will start with the panic button. Panic time. <coughs> um, excuse me. And uh, the panic for me is uh, DeAndre Swift. Now, drafted DeAndre Swift in the mid 
rounds, the the early mid rounds uh, of your draft, and he had one touch. He was out touched by uh, Carry On Johnson and Adrian Peterson. I think the guy is he's almost borderline droppable. I don't want to say droppable yet. I think you still you still stash him, but you can't start him, Kev. Yeah, I think he's probably not droppable just because the Lions do not know what the hell they're doing with their running backs. Like next week, it wouldn't shock me to see him get like 80%. Actually, it would shock me. But it wouldn't shock me to see him get like 40% of the carries the next week. I don't know what the hell they're doing over there. Why would you draft some dude with your first, with your second pick if you're just going to bring in 35-year-old Adrian Peterson? Um, but it's yeah, obviously he's, he's like, working out like, though, like, right? Yeah, of course Peterson's working out, but it's 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 just a bad use of resources and um I, I don't know. It's just running backs don't matter. So if you if you subscribe to that theory, why draft him with your second round pick? Any thoughts on this uh Detroit backfield, Jono? Uh it's it's a mess. Uh you, you don't know who's gonna well, Adrian Peterson has gotten the most carries this season, uh, I believe. But yeah, between Swift, Johnson, and Peterson, like none of them are you. You can't count on any of them to actually produce. And if they do, it's going to be you know a completely random one of them. And it's just it, it's a mess. It's bordering on the on a Patriots backfield kind of thing where you have no idea which one of them is going to blow up at any time, and it's really not worth investing much into it at all. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the, the the other thing, I mean, the thing with the Patriots backfield is that they're actually good. Um, the Lions <laughs> well, that too. Suck. And they you can't figure out who to start. So uh, it is, it's just a mess. If anyone wants to take DeAndre Swift from you, just take anything you can get. Yeah. Uh, Kev, uh, who are you panicking on? Uh, yeah, my panic button is a guy I was pretty high on coming into the season. <sighs> Um, I thought with the new offensive coordinator, Jason Garrett, oh, by the way, it's Evan Ingram. Uh, Jason Garrett was a guy who used Jason Witten a ton when he was the offensive coordinator head coach. So I thought Ingram would get a similar thing. And he, and he, I mean, that's kind of been true. He's got 20 targets through three games, but he's got, what is this? 11 catches for 80, 94 yards. Um, that offense is just horrible. It's just really, really bad. Daniel Jones seems to have kind of regressed. Um, they're not really doing anything on offense. I can't really tell you what the focus of their offense is, to be honest. Um, and until they kind of figure it out, Evan Ingram is, is someone that I'm not looking... I, I, I don't even know if I'd start him over some of the guys that you randomly picked up this year, like Mo Ali cox or, or Drew Sample or Dalton Schultz. Like, it's it's bad with the Giants. Oh, you mentioned Mo Ali cox so I, I'm just... Uh, he was dropped in our league, and I, I uh, in our in our F six P league, my tongue is hanging out. I want him. <laughs> yeah, he was dropped by me. I dropped Did him. you? Oh, you dropped him. It was you? Oh, I thought. I oh yeah, there's Jack your name. Doyle. Yeah, Jack there's Doyle. Doyle coming back. Someone, someone lied to me. And told I me Jack Doyle him. was back. He did not Jack play. Jack Doyle. Or he did play, but he got like fifty three percent of the snap share. He didn't do anything in the passing game. He he, he so, played. He just didn't. Yeah, he played. He just he didn't do anything. Was I, that the reason? You know, we're all looking for this tight end uh, route um, stat. It's funny. I I noticed that you mentioned it on our F6P chat, Jono, about the uh, uh, the tight end, um, that, that stat about tight end route running. And actually, Jack Doyle did a lot more route running, but it was Wally Cox that was getting the targets. I don't go figure the story of jack doyle's career this is i think like three years ago i was pounding the table that he was better than eric ebron because he just had so much more opportunity and eric ebron somehow just produced more and uh that didn't really work out kev you're the guy guy with the stats where can we find that stat about um te snaps and 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 versus uh rope running yeah, I know where to find it, but no free ads, so I'm not going to say it because it's a paid service. So the only thing I would say is um, just watch condensed versions of the games and just count yourself if you really want the information. Hmm. There's, there's your it's answer, John. You can see you could skip the running plays. It's not that hard. Yeah, but no. Don't be lazy, John. <laughs> yeah, that's just too hard. Uh, yeah, but no. Well, maybe. It depends on the game. Yeah. Okay, uh, Jono, elephant in the room. You've got the elephant in the room, and uh, I know who that is. So let's talk about the elephant. Don't be mean. Uh, it's just Joe Mixon. Uh, <laughs> Don't first be mean. Borderline but... first round pick. He's in good shape. He's not an elephant. <laughs> <laughs> elephant in no, the room, Mixon's you know what I mean. Been, uh, <laughs> uh, Mixon's been bad. Uh a lot of people jumped on the Joe Mixon train after his the second half last year, where he was suddenly used properly in the passing game, and uh, he looked he looked good. He produced well, but 
all the warning signs were still there for Joe Mixon. The uh, you know the offensive line was still bad. The defense was still bad, and game scripts get out of hand for the Bengals really quickly. And Zach Taylor just doesn't use Joe Mixon in the passing game, and he's not been good enough rushing. Uh, he's only averaging 3.2 yards a carry um, to kind of offset that. Uh, Gio Bernard had what three three targets yesterday, three catches, and he he, he matched Joe Mixon's half PPR percent uh, point production. Um, it's not for lack of opportunity. Joe Mixon is fifth overall in rushing attempts, uh, behind like Josh Jacobs, Derrick Henry, uh, Ezekiel Elliott. And uh, crap, who else am I missing? But anyways, he's fifth overall and in, in rushing attempts, and he's just not producing. Uh, as I said, the offensive line is bad, and I don't unless they start making an effort targeting him, which I don't really see them moving away from Tyler Boyd, T. Higgins, and AJ Green. It's uh, not not going to be a good season for Joe Mixon. Mm. Kev, your thoughts? I will never ever give up on the RB one in a good offense, but I may demote him to an RB two. <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, it's just not looking good for Mixon. I mean, I still believe in the offense. I still think that he'll have better matchups where he gets it together. But I think um, going forward, he's just not an, like a no-brainer lock in your lineup. Um, you do have to kind of consider the matchup. I mean, the thing that is good is he's getting 15-plus carries a game, and he is still somewhat involved in the passing game. So if there's a chance that, you know, like he would be given the opportunity to, to you know, win the job i guess or to break out he's never they're never going to give the ball to Gio bernard over him or anything like that so um I, I still think he's a fair enough start it's just dude, he's definitely not like the rb1 that you drafted yeah i the, the funny that the cincinnati Bengals are rather odd they, they've got a lot of booms and a lot of busts like you just mentioned uh, joe burrow he's he's got a, a an arrow pointing way up uh, T. Higgins has got an arrow pointing way up, and yet we've seen like John Ross like fall off the radar. Now Joe Mixon is in trouble, and and uh, to be honest, AJ Green isn't isn't so uh, like he hasn't really been that hot either. Sort of in the middle, but you're not you're not gaining like a lot of people are saying. AJ Green's a bargain, and but AJ Green wasn't a bargain after all. Um, you know, at his because I mean, at his ADP, you were you were drafting AJ Green and thinking, okay, he's going to be back to where he was, but eh, you didn't really get a bargain out of AJ Green and Joe Mixon. He's another guy. He's he's one of the Bengals that has a down arrow, and uh, and we're looking at we're looking at all these other. I mean, even Sample has an up arrow, if you ask me. So there's a lot of up and down arrows on the Bengals and. Uh, uh, so and and Joe Mixon's definitely on the. On, you're not dropping him, um, but um, I think maybe if you're enterprising enough, you can probably make a pretty good buy low deal out of him, Jono. Do you think maybe? It uh, depends what you're buying with. Um, you can try buying, but again, you're taking on that risk of you still have to pay for a player that people drafted, you know, in the first second round. And like Kevin said, he's the RB one in good offense. So whoever has him, they're not giving up on their investment cheap. And if you're paying a lot, then if and if he doesn't pick it up and he's still rushing for you know three yards a carry, then then he becomes your problem, and you then by then it's too late to kind of fix it. So mm. I mean, he he is a buy low target for me. Here's a here's a good option that I like. If you have Mike Davis and you're not the Christian McCaffrey owner, try and swing some kind of Mike Davis plus a wide receiver two or three for Mixon because. Davis in about three weeks is going to be useless. And that guy who has Mixon is probably like 0-2, 0-3. And, and, and he might need the help immediately. Yeah. Fair enough. That's, that's, a, that's, you're always thinking on your feet, Kev. I'll, it's, uh, it's that time again, folks. It's time for Mr. Unlimited. Gotta be unlimited. Now, this week, uh, our uh, Mr. Unlimited, uh, Jono and I will nominate, and Kevin will choose between the two. We will both make our cases for uh, uh, for Mr. Unlimited. And, uh, Jono, uh, you're up. Make your pitch for Mr. Unlimited. Uh, yeah, I'm giving this one to Josh Allen. Uh a lot of like a lot was said uh, about him by me coming into the season, but man, he came, he's coming out firing. Uh, he had a career high of 266 passing yards uh, before the season, blew it out of the water with 312 a week one, then did it again 415 uh, week two. Now week three puts up 311 yards, four passing touchdowns, rushes for another touchdown against the Rams. Uh, his first you know real defensive test of the season and leads a fourth quarter comeback. Uh, and threw a touchdown with like five seconds left or whatever it was to, to win the game. Uh, he's been really good. I don't know what uh, Sean McDermott is working with him, uh, working on with him in the offseason, but he's, you know, 
the number two overall player or, you know, scorer in fantasy, number two quarterback, as it were. But it's just been great. And this uh, the win against the Rams just pushes him to Mr. Unlimited territory. Um, it always gives you the advantage when you have a player with the win. And I could have easily picked uh, the the namesake of the title of Mr. Unlimited, Russell Wilson, because Russell Wilson was great. But I'm going to see if we can get uh, our first player on a losing team to uh, to win Mr. Unlimited because he really was great. I mean, he was. He um, and only he only had six carries, six carries and and fifty eight yards, but fourteen targets. I mean, granted, Michael Thomas was out, but he caught thirteen of fourteen of those passes and one hundred thirty nine yards and two touchdowns. Just we he was projected at number one, uh, and he came out as number one in half PPR. So Alvin Kamara has to be, to me, Mr. Unlimited this week. Kev, you be the judge. Who gets it? Is it Alvin Kamara All right. or Josh Allen? You guys have really made it difficult for me this week because Kamara was incredible. Like, he was the Saints offense. Drew Brees' numbers look good because he threw, like, a two-yard little out thing to Kamara, and he just took it 50 yards for a touchdown. And Kamara really was the only reason they had a chance in that game. The reason I, I, I want – see, I want to pick against Josh Allen because the numbers look great and all, the three three eleven and four touchdowns, one interception. But you got to take a little bit of credit away from him. He threw three touchdowns from within the five-yard line. That's kind of like – that's just like padding your stats, basically. But to be fair, that, normal, normally he would have run for those. Correct. That is true. <laughs> he might have. That being said, I have a hard and fast rule. That Mr. Unlimited wins the game. Therefore, Josh <laughs> Allen is Mr. Unlimited. I cannot get to a loser. Unless, unless it's a week that Russell Wilson loses a game, that opens the door a little bit. But you didn't even mention that Josh Allen actually had a touchdown run, which, I mean, for fantasy purposes. Is, I mentioned. Did you? Uh, I, I didn't. Did. I, I wasn't listening to you. You know how it goes. Yeah. Um, <laughs> But I mean, f- five total touchdowns. Like, it is, uh, you got to give the guy his flowers. Comeback win, the Drams. I don't know what the hell they were doing, but um, you know, it, it is. You got to win the game. Mister Unlimited wins the games, and therefore Josh Allen is Mister Unlimited. Mister Unlimited, gotta be unlimited. Josh Allen, Mister Unlimited of the week. Okay, I keep track of you somewhere. Who do we have? We had Russell week one. Uh, yeah. Last week we had. Uh, it was either Dak or Aaron Jones. No, it was Aaron Jones. It was Aaron, Aaron Jones, Jones yeah. won the game, so it was Aaron Jones. Aaron right. Jones. And, and then Josh Allen. Got it. All right. Uh, yeah, okay. We'll keep a, a – I'll put the notes down here. I'll make sure that we – so that we don't forget. The, the so correct we... answer, though, is is actually Lamar Jackson. <laughs> Lamar Jackson will be Mr. Unlimited. Afterwards. It would have been a pretty, pretty bold pick. Just I just write, you know, Lamar yeah. Jackson here. No, you like, would have had my Unlimited. vote. You would have had my vote. Like, you know. <laughs> but what if what the Ravens lose? <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> Moving right along, Jono is our writer of uh, the waiver wire, uh, so be sure to check out his article tomorrow to find out who you should pick up. We've got to, to talk about waivers today and see who we should be picking up off the waiver wire. And uh, Jono, I've I've created a a, a list of, of candidates here of uh, waiver pickups for. Uh, for Wednesday morning, Christmas morning, as we th- as we say. Um, oh, I, I want to mention something about waivers. You know, um, one thing about waivers. This the the other thing I like about waiver day. And I was talking to a guy on Twitter about sort of like a little brief Twitter back and forth with a guy, and uh, we were talking about the next fun thing about waivers is when waivers is done, and then everybody rushes in to pick over the bones. There's a there's a ten minute. There's a 10 minute thing of a, a bit of excitement there. I noticed Kevin, you're right in there. Like after waivers are over, you're, you're right in there, like picking over the bones. Yeah. So. I mean, it's easy for me on the West Coast and you guys are all East Coast. You guys are all asleep, slacking. Well, there was a, this one guy says he sets his alarm at 3 a.m. So, yeah. I respect that. I used to do that and then I figured I don't care enough in some leagues <laughs> to do that. So I respect not- the hell out of that, but I'm just chilling <laughs> to 12 a.m. just waiting. <laughs> I always get the first run. That's why I stream defenses. You know, I always get the first pick of defenses. It's nice. I got to move. Uh-huh. John, I'll give us a waiver. Uh, give us a waiver running back that we need to get. Uh, I'll go Jeff Wilson Jr. Um, so long as Raheem Mostert is out and Jerick McKinnon, I think he hurt his rib this week. Uh, he says he's fine, but uh, an injury is still an injury. Uh, Jeff Wilson came in. 
He only had two fewer touches than McKinnon did, uh, the supposed lead back. So he had 15 touches, 12 carries, three catches, turned it into 69 yards, two touchdowns. Um, I, I granted it was, you know, but uh, Wilson played well. He's always been kind of been, you know, the a vulture kind of player. He always comes in. He's been stealing touchdowns for three years now. And if McKinnon can't be full go, then again, Wilson is the lead back in a supposedly run heavy offense. We'll see if Kyle Shanahan kind of switches up the strategy. But, you know, against the Eagles, maybe the game script gets a little bit out of hand and they'll try to bleed the clock. So Wilson could get, you know, another 15 touches again. And that's pretty worthy of a flex in, in PPR, I'd say. Mm. All right, Kev, uh, pick us a, uh, a, a wide receiver that uh, you, you're rushing out to get. Oh, it has to be a wide receiver? Okay. Um, Brandon right. Ayuk is the obvious choice. Justin Jefferson is the obvious choice. T. Higgins is another guy who I really liked. Um, we talked about it a little bit. That Bengals offense is just going to have to throw a ton, and I think – they're also going to be bad, so they're going to want to see their young players. And I think Higgins already won the wide receiver three job. Uh, John Ross was a healthy scratch, so he's locked in as the number three. Caught six and nine targets for 60 yards and a touchdown this week. And uh, I think that only gets better from here on out. I'm not saying he's going to be he's going to blow up or anything like that, but uh, he'll probably be okay this year. And you, you never know. AJ Green is never the healthiest, and they might even look to trade him to a winner so i like it t higgins as a pickup all right i'll take a, a waiver trade and uh mo ali cox i already mentioned him gotta get him i want him <laughs> gotta i gotta get uh, him on i want him on on teams but uh probably hard to get so it probably cost you a bit i think spending fab mm, depends on how much you're in need of a, of a tight end but mo ali cox uh definitely a guy you want to uh have in your arsenal now he's he's like he's already moving on up he could have actually been my moving on up guy so uh Mowally cox we've already talked about him i don't need to go into any further details but uh, he's my guy but kevin i sort of stole some thunder did you want uh was there a guy on the waivers that you had uh that you really wanted to talk about um yeah i guess so i mean he's a conditional ad on the condition that Devonte adams is still hurt robert tanyan of the packers is is an interesting guy in this year where the tight ends just absolutely suck um he's played 60 percent of snaps in each of his games and he's got uh, 50 yards and a touchdown 25 yards and a touchdown in his last two I, it's not horrible it's not great or anything like that but uh, just not got someone to keep your eye on mm, uh john or anybody else any position. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to mention. He is playing the Falcons next week, and the Falcons are absolutely horrendous against tight ends. Um, they just got lit up <laughs> they're, they're, by... They're horrendous against it. everybody. <laughs> yeah, yeah but they just got lit up by everybody. an absolute fossilized corpse in, in Jimmy Graham for 60 yards and two touchdowns last week. Uh, Dolan Schultz got 88 yards and a touchdown against them two weeks prior. So um, Tanyan is definitely a streamer next week, especially if Adams is out. Mm. I say, John, uh, any any position you want. Uh, I, I wasn't able to find any quarterbacks to pick up, but I don't know if you can pick that. Uh, uh, any... Yeah, um, not the you know the sexiest pick, but Ryan Fitzpatrick has the Seahawks this week. They have allowed an average of 439 passing yards in the in the in their three games. An average of 439 passing yards, 30 fantasy points a game. Uh, the Seahawks are going to go up early, so you know that Fitzpatrick's going to have to throw. And he's not afraid to throw it or, you know, run headfirst into six defenders just to score a touchdown. So I think I don't think the Dolphins are going to win, but I think Fitzpatrick, uh, for a one-week pickup at least, he's got a chance to, to produce. Uh, in a, in a, he's got a chance to produce at least uh, with what I assume would be 40-plus throws in this game. So, yeah, Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, okay. Uh, I am going to take uh... – I'll take the, uh, uh, the obvious one. Justin Jefferson um, came. I don't think it was really out of the blue that Justin Jefferson came in and and had a ball out game. I think I think a lot of people could see this coming, and people were drafting him because um, no Stefan Diggs. I did. I mean, I thought that was I thought it was pretty plainly obvious. But a lot of people thought, no, no, no. In fact, a lot of the analysts were saying that, oh, Justin Jefferson, you can leave him on the waiver wire. He's not going to do anything. It just didn't make sense to me. And, uh, I, and it, and as it turns out, it doesn't because Cousins, like Cousins had such a bad week last week. I mean, his worst passing, like a 15.9 passer rating last week. I thought, there's no way Cousins is going to be lousy. Like that. I mean, Cousins is a middling QB two, right? So I mean, he's not, uh, but he's not terrible. I mean, there's, I mean, we we can think of terrible quarterbacks, but 
Cousins isn't one of them. And uh, I think hopefully Zimmer lets uh, uh, Cousins cook too. So, um, but I'm, but uh, Justin Jefferson, uh, you guys already talked about the fab. I think people who are in need of a wide receiver have got to, if you're going to want, if you want Jefferson, you're probably going to have to, you, you might have to really uh, dig deep into your pocket with fab to get him. You might have to be as much as 75% of your fab to get him. He's quite, uh, he's quite popular right now. And reading on Twitter, people are going nuts. So, uh, kind of tough. He's a tough pickup. You're going to need a lot of fab to get him. Um, so rambled on a bit there, but, uh, <laughs> but that's our waiver wire. Uh, but in order to get people off the waiver wire, we've got to drop people, Jono. And we got to drop, we got to drop players to get, if you want to pick up players. Yeah. Um, I mean, he should have been dropped already, but I see he's still rostered in close to 40% of Yahoo League. So I'm going to go with Matt Breda. Um, he's not part of this Dolphins offense. Uh, not a big part anyways. He had three carries against Jacksonville uh, in what was a winning effort, a blowout, and he still only got three carries. Uh, this is Miles Gaston's backfield and Jordan Howard's goal line. Uh, I can't wait to see if he actually does get 16 touchdowns with like 30 yards for the entire season. That would be amazing, but I digress. Uh, yeah, Matt Breda has seven fantasy points total and half PPR for the entire season, and he is only relevant if somebody in front of him gets hurt. So, yeah, not 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 worth holding on to. Mm. Does that go for uh, Howard as well? If you need a goal line like dart throw, because he's scored in all three games from the one yard line. So if you need somebody that you know might score a touchdown, then there are worse running backs out there than Jordan Howard. Don't expect you know yards, but if you if you need to you know pray for a goal line touchdown, then there are worse options out there than Jordan Howard. Mm. Um, my guy is uh, Wayne Gallman, and to a lesser extent, Dion Lewis. I think this is going to turn into uh, the Devonta Freeman show, um, for what it's worth. I mean, we already I already mentioned about how Saquon Barkley in week in in week one, um, he didn't do very well. He like, uh, what was it? Like ten carries uh, went for negative yardage out of the fifteen, and uh, that offensive line just cannot support. Um, they cannot support a running back of Saquon Barkley's caliber. Certainly cannot um, hold the caliber of lesser lights like Devonta Freeman, Deion Lewis, and Wayne Gallman. So, and especially Wayne Gallman. You can just, if you picked him up last week, uh, just just toss him. And consider, if you own Deion Lewis, you might have to consider tossing him right now. He's, uh, if you can drop Deion Lewis, if you want somebody on the waiver wire, so there's not really Wayne Gallman and Dylan Lewis are droppable. Kev? Uh, yeah, that's a good pick. I mean, I don't know why people really bought into um, Giants running backs, considering Barkley couldn't do anything with that offensive line. So I don't know why people thought a bunch of journeymen could. Uh, my drop is going to be Benny Snell. Um, yeah, I don't really know what happened with this one. Uh, Connor had a horrible week one that came out in the last two weeks. He's had 100-plus yards and a touchdown in each game, and he seems to be the guy in that backfield on top of that. I think they added uh, Anthony McFarland got his first career touches this week. So Snell is seems to be just a guy. Uh, Connor seems to have taken over that backfield completely, which means Snell is pretty much droppable. Yeah. Uh, continue on, Kev, with your spec ad. You're a great spec adder. You're good at spec ads. Give us a spec ad. Um, yeah, Tanyan's a good spec ad. Another spec ad I had, uh, Brian Hill is a guy that every time I see him, he impresses me. And I, I know Ido Smith is there, but he's not. I don't think he's the direct backup. And Gurley is a guy who worries me with the knee problems. He didn't look great up until this week. Uh, but then, then again, everyone else on the Falcons offense looked great. So Brian Hill is a guy who's interesting to hold just because I don't really believe in Curly's knee at this point. Uh, through two games, he was really awful. This last game, he ended up being okay. Um, so yeah, Brian Hill is interesting. I don't know if I'm looking at you know any of the receivers. Like Bre- oh, I almost stole someone's there. I'm not going to say that guy's name. Um, yeah, I, it's just, it's kind of a bad week for spec ads. A lot of these people are a lot are all are probably already rostered. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe you go out and get. You know, Adam Humphreys, if you're super desperate, you can maybe get James Washington if uh, Deontay Thomas is going to miss, Deontay Johnson is going to miss some time. Hmm. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll leave the best for last with John. Um, I'm going to, I was scouring around to see if there's any Jets that can be picked up. And there is. There's a Jet that you can spec at, and it's Braxton Berrios. 
actually doing fairly solid. I mean, he's for the Jets. Um, he's he's catching all his targets. Um, and he's an integral part of their uh, offense. Um, Braxton Berrios is actually um, a lot better, and and maybe I think he's a worthwhile stash just in case uh, this guy starts starts turning it up. Um, I'm not. I was kind of impressed. I'm just getting his numbers up here. Braxton Berrios, he's somewhere around here. Here he is. Um, he's currently WR81 in my rest of season rankings, but um, in his in his games, like he's. Uh, his last two games, he's he's finished as WR16 and WR21, and um, he's flying under the radar. So uh, against San Francisco, uh, eight targets, six receptions, 59 yards, and a touchdown. Um, scored a touchdown against the Colts with 64 yards on four receptions. Um, pretty good, solid numbers. I mean, flexible. I think Braxton Berrios. Yeah, um, I would say. Uh, why not uh, stash him and see what happens? I think he got injured, though. Um, he's he's he got a questionable tag for some reason. I don't know exactly the reason, but uh, but uh, uh, he's a he's a DP if you want to get him. You can comment on that, Jono, or you can give us yours. <laughs> no, uh, I think Barrios is a is a good pick. Like while Perryman and Crowder are out, somebody has to catch passes. So why not Barrios, right? Yeah, it's solid spec ad. Uh. Mine is, I can't remember if I talked about him last, I know we mentioned last week, I can't remember if he was in the spec ad spot, but I'm going to go with him again, uh, KJ Hamler. Uh, we talked about it with the injury to Cortland Sutton, uh, that somebody has to step up as the what as the, the, the well, second round receiver behind Jerry Judy, and they spent a second round pick on Hamler. Uh, he played well in his debut, and they used him right away. He had seven targets, uh, 48 yards, a little bit of a depressed game in... Uh, in week three this past week uh, five targets three catches 30 yards but as they get him more involved uh, and they're trying they gave him a design run uh, so they're definitely trying to find ways to get him the ball I think as he gets more comfortable in the offense he did miss week one due to injury uh, this could be a uh, a sneaky a sneaky pickup uh, down the line for you know the second half of the season or what have you uh, if you have space on your bench just he's a big play guy he has the talent um, maybe Blake Bortles is the one that can unlock his potential who knows but uh I understand it's tough to get into, you know, the Denver offense with how horrible they look this week. But Hamler's, uh, you know, talented guy, and who knows, he could be again just a, a dark throw spec ad for the end of your bench to see if he blows up. All right. And uh, that about wraps it up. We've just we just passed the hour mark for our show, and uh, f- so final thoughts, guys. Uh, we're just about to get ready to watch the watch the game, um, so we'll wrap this up pretty quickly. Uh, final thoughts, uh, Kev. Go oh, Ravens. <laughs> Go Ravens. <laughs> yeah, me too. Go Ravens. Uh, oh, especially Lamar. Uh, Jono? Final thoughts. Go my fantasy players. And um, also, I just, Kevin, I did want you to know that five hours ago, Josh Gordon tweeted that he wants to start a podcast and would like funny co host. So oh, I immediately DM Josh Gordon about this, like right away. Yeah, did this you? is the opportunity of a lifetime. Yep. It's almost like we were born for this. So. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> you dragged me on for a foil, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's happening. Maybe, maybe, maybe we can get him on as a guest next week. <laughs> yeah, get it, get his feet wet. I would. I, yeah, that's, maybe I should try. Yeah, did, did you DM to see if you can come on the Fantasy Edge? If you got him to come on the Fantasy Edge, he's got to come on. So there's just no other two ways about it. He might even have some good fantasy insights. Richard, Anyways, I don't folks, care. Richard, I don't care what you think. If Josh Gordon agrees to come on this podcast, he's coming on this podcast. <laughs> 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 all right uh, okay uh that's the fantasy edge for this week good luck in uh, week four everybody and i hope this advice helped you uh we'll see you next week uh Jono will get is in the hosting chair and uh we hope uh we hope it all goes well on wednesday morning for your waivers and stuff take care everybody see you next week